What's up YouTube? Have you ever wondered how you can switch from Adobe Illustrator over to Affinity Designer? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen. I'm a media design educator and today we are talking all about how to make the switch from Adobe Illustrator over to Affinity Designer. Specifically, we're going to hit on three important topics you need to know before making the switch. Tools and features, file compatibility, and user interface. But before we talk about those things, the first thing I wanna say is just that I really recommend that you go ahead and download the Affinity Designer free trial before making the switch and set aside some really dedicated time to determining whether or not this is right for you because it is a big change in adjustment for you to go from working in the Adobe program over to the Affinity program. So make sure that you have some significant time set aside where you can focus in on this. You have 30 days to do it with the free trial, so that's plenty of time to work through a couple projects and really understand whether or not this workflow is going to work for you. Now let's hop in and talk about the specifics. The first thing that we wanna talk about are tools and features. Now I'm not going to go through every tool and feature today because that's gonna be really individual to you. I've done videos like that in the past, which you're welcome to go check out, although they are a little older and things have changed a little bit. Since the release of Affinity Designer version two, the two programs have come much closer to feature parity, where there are a lot more things that are the same, but they aren't always the same, and each designer will have a little bit different needs out of their programs. This is where you're really going to need that free trial, and you're going to hop in and work through an entire project just as you would if you were actually doing it. This is the only way you're going to know if the features you need are actually present in the program. Now, like I said, since Affinity Designer version two was released, we've come closer to feature parity with things like the Shape Builder tool, which was a holdup for a lot of people, as well as Envelope, Warp, and Distort, which was also a holdup, but there are still things that are not the same. We don't have a gradient mesh over in Affinity Designer version two, and we don't have image trace. Those are two that are big hangups for people. So make sure that you've worked through your entire project workflow, including whether or not you need to work with collaborators to make sure that Affinity Designer is going to work for you. The other thing to note about features and tools is not everything is going to have exactly the same name or be in exactly the same spot. And so you want to make sure that you don't just assume that Affinity Designer can't do something because you don't see it looking exactly the way you saw it in Adobe Illustrator. You may want to go ahead and just Google it, find a video online that talks about it, watch one of my courses in the description below to really find out if that feature is there. You can always go ahead and ask a question in the comments of this video as well, and I'll do my best to answer those. A good example of this is Adobe Illustrator has a bunch of really old and redundant tools like the rotate tool and the flip tool. And these are things that you don't really need anymore, but you won't see them in Affinity Designer because they're all built into the transform panel. So you don't see that tool and you might think, oh, they don't have that when in fact, of course, they do have the ability to flip and rotate and transform. Okay, so once you've gone through and you've decided that the features are correct for you, the next thing that you wanna do is make sure that you can get your files over. File compatibility is a huge issue, and when you're switching to any computer program, no matter what that is, you wanna make sure that you can bring your files with you if you think you're going to need those files in the future. And here's a little hint, you probably are going to need those files in the future, or at least some of them at some point. So file compatibility is a big issue here. You wanna make sure that you sort this out before before you cancel your Adobe subscription. Because once you've canceled your Adobe subscription, you won't have access to Adobe Illustrator anymore, and you won't be able to open or save or export or modify .ai files anymore. So it's really important that you sort this out during your free trial period and before you call Adobe to cancel. So when it comes to files, there are three types of files from Adobe Illustrator that Affinity Designer can import. Okay, and it's really important to understand this, and I've done an entire video, which I'll link to up here, that shows you exactly how these different files work. But the first file type is the AI file with PDF pass-through. Okay, and it's really important that it has the PDF pass-through, because if it doesn't, it's not going to work. A regular AI file like you've been saving the whole time you've been working in Adobe Illustrator will not open in Affinity Designer. It will just say, this doesn't work. So it's gotta have that PDF pass through. The second file type that you can use is the EPS file. 
The EPS file is kind of a format that's used with lots of different programs and in many different places. So you can save things out in an EPS file and bring them in. The last file type and one that's probably used most commonly is the SVG, the Scalable Vector Graphics file type. This is used by lots of different vector programs. If you've ever used Inkscape, you're probably very familiar with it. And so those are the three file types that you can use. It's very important that you take your files take a representative file that has a lot of the features that you normally use in Adobe Illustrator, export it as all three of these file types and see how it imports into Affinity Designer. Simple files that are just basic shapes, fills and strokes work really well, but more complicated files that start involving things like gradient meshes, warps and different things like that, those don't tend to transfer as well. So you really need to see what's right for you based on the type of design that you do. And then you need to determine, can I deal with the difficulties here? Are these files that I've made before really important to me? Or am I mostly going to be doing new design work and it's not that important to me to be able to get back to my old files? This will probably depend on where you're at in your design career. If you are a new designer, you probably don't have a lot of files and it's not going to be a big deal to you because you're going to look back on those old files and you're not going to like them very much anyway. But if you are an experienced designer who's been working for years, you've accumulated hundreds, if not thousands of files in Adobe Illustrator, this is going to be a much bigger deal for you and it's going to be a lot more work. Even if you find a file export type that works well for your type of design, it's going to be a lot of work to go back and save out each of those files as the correct file type if you've mostly just been working in .ai. So this is something to really consider and think about. It may be worth it to you for the money that you're going to save by switching to Affinity Designer long term, but you have to weigh that against the cost in your time of making the switch. The other thing to think about here is whether or not you will have some other way of accessing Adobe files after you have gone ahead and canceled your own Adobe subscription. For example, many libraries and universities have computers available with the Adobe suite on them. And so you can go over there and use one of their computers to access your old Adobe file types. If you live near one of these places, you might be able to do that should you really need to get back into an Adobe Illustrator file. But that's something to consider and make sure that you know how you would do that and have that in place before making the switch. The last thing, and quite frankly, the least important that we need to consider is the learning curve of the user interface. People sometimes make a huge deal about this when they're talking about switching computer programs. They're like, oh, I'll have to spend so much time relearning the user interface. But in reality, it's not that difficult to learn a new computer program's user interface even if you have years of muscle memory built up around the old one. The switch actually happens pretty seamlessly. And particularly when going from Adobe Illustrator to Affinity Designer, it's pretty seamless because they're set up almost identically with tools along the left, panels along the right, and a context toolbar up at the top. And it's not like Adobe Illustrator never changes their user interface. Remember when we went to the properties panel and everybody kind of freaked out about that because it was different, but it turned out fine in the end. You can make this switch with the user interface after just a few days of learning your workflow within it, you're going to start feeling very comfortable. The other thing is you can always go ahead and take one of my courses linked in the description below if you want to become more familiar with the user interface and where different tools are at, or you can go ahead and ask your question in the comments below. So really, I don't think the learning curve of the user interface needs to be a big deal to you. That's definitely worth $600 a year, which is what you'll save by switching over from the Adobe subscription over to Affinity Designer. Okay, so those are the three things you really have to think about before switching over. You gotta think about the tools and features, whether or not they can do what you need it to do. You gotta think about your file types and compatibility and what you're going to need. And you need to think about whether or not you can handle the learning curve of the user interface. All of these can be figured out by using the 30 day free trial, which is what I recommend you do. Okay, that's it for this video, but if you have any questions or comments about this, please leave those in the comments section below. We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.